Um, happy Mother's Day. And happy Mother's Day to all your fathers. And, and you know, I, I absolutely had no plans for this talk whatsoever. I have learned to trust in spirit because I will work on formulating a speech and it gets lost or destroyed the day before anyway. So I finally, after all my stubborn headedness, have understood we stand here and give what we receive. So having said that, Mother's Day, wow. What a wonderful, heavy, oh my goodness, kind of holiday. Um, when I speak or when I teach or whatever it is that I do, I am very familiar that words don't teach, but actions and experiences do. So as, as an experience, I call myself a black belt of life. This one in this hand. Thanks. This one in this hand. <laughs> She's keeping me grounded. I got to love her. She's like all about crystals and healing. And she goes, you're going to need these today. So thank you. Um, so my, my value of life and reality is transparency. And if you can't be honest and transparent with yourself, then you're not going to be helpful to anyone else because you're simply going to give them the words that you are given or the words that you think you should give. So if you don't want to hear the truth, then this is probably the time that you go to sleep or close your eyes or exit. But here we go. So Mother's Day, boy, do we work really hard to be the moms that we either grew up with or the moms that we don't want to be anything like. So having said that, most of our lives, we go through a very serious healing process so that we can learn to be all that we have experienced that we don't want to be. So I think it's extremely important that we experience adversity and that we experience what we don't want so that we know exactly what we want and what we do want to be. Now here's where the problem lies. We are so hypnotized or brainwashed by the people in our lives and our upbringing that sometimes it takes the greater part of our lives to remove, release, unlearn and relearn what it is that we want or that we want other people to think of us. So I thought about this this morning and I could sit up here and I can tell you about what a horrible experience I had as a child. Or I can stand up here and tell you that I'm very grateful for those experiences because I've had several moms in my life. My dad was married nine times and I had a lot of um, foster homes. And you know what? When I look back on my life, I'm so lucky. I mean, I have a lot to forget, a lot to release, a lot to forgive. But oh my God. I had a mom that taught me how to sew. I had a mom that taught me how to crochet. I taught me, I, I taught me, I had a mom that taught me how to make a meal out of nothing. You can have a bean, water, and a hot dog and make a meal. It's, it's like incredible. I taught moms that taught me about severe re religion, like Pentecostal and Christian and Mormonism and um, bits and pieces of spiritualism. And I've had moms that have taught me that it's important to be beautiful. I've had moms that taught me that it's important to not care about how you look. I mean, I have had all these wonderful experiences. So if I focused all my attention on how bad I was treated, or how much I wasn't loved, then I'm gonna miss the whole picture. 
the whole picture of what God placed in my path and what I chose for my path to be. Do you understand? Um, words don't teach, but experiences do. And I knew I was so immensely interested in anything spiritual from the time I could walk. I was the kid with a million questions that was told to shut up repetitively. And now, you know, when someone says, you talk too much, I say, I've got a lot to say. I do, I have a lot of lessons that I've learned and I feel it in my heart and soul and I'm so passionate. And the bravest people I've ever met in my life are my family. Those who have learned to nurture me and put up with me because I have so many voices of the past that re-enter into my mind and say, you're not good enough or this isn't for you or you'll never be enough. And I have to say thank you to them because it constantly reminds me of how far I've come and what I give. I never feel like I give enough, ever, to you, to my family, to myself. And I'm telling you this because I know, how many of you know where I'm coming from right now? How many of you feel or have felt what I'm explaining to you right now? So I can talk to you about how amazing Mother's Day is and how wonderful it is to receive roses and daisies and sunflowers. And that's all good. But the reality is that's not who I am. And flowers are beautiful. But what brings you to the memory of the flowers? For me, sunflowers, when I was a little girl, I used to hide. I would go across the street, I'd run across the freeway and lay down in a field of sunflowers. And I didn't care about the ants or the smells, but in my mind, they protected me. So now when I get sunflowers, I think, oh my God, it's a beautiful state of perfection and protection. You know, there are so many things in our lives that constantly either remind us of who we are or give us the strength to move on to who we want to be. And we don't have to be rich. We don't have to be wealthy. We don't have to be anything other than what we put in our minds that we need to be successful. But I'm going to tell you from spirit side, the only thing that's ever been expected or accepted of you is happiness and joy and love. And when somebody says, when God only gives you what you can handle, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you that's what you've attracted in your life. And it has nothing to do with God. Because that's not what God is. The real God that we're created from, that spark of divinity, that's love. That's life. That's happiness. That's you being who you are in the greatest moment of what you are. Place yourself in the moment of your happiest thought. Place yourself with your first romance or love or first kiss. Place yourself eating that most amazing, delicious meal you've ever eaten. That's God. Crying and mourning for someone's death or mourning for someone's sickness or cancer or whatever it is. When you're in that state of sadness, anger, depression, frustration, loss, that's normal in a human experience. But the core of God, the core of love, the core of light, of happiness, of greatness, and everything that you are created in, when you start moving into that feeling of less than anything than that, that just moves, that just means you're moving into a separateness of who you really are. These are signals. These are extreme signals. When we're feeling depressed or worthless or angry or helpless or frustrated, 
These are your signs telling you that you're moving away from God, that God's source, that wonderful, loving, accepting energy that is each one of us, that's what's in us, that's what we're created from, that's what we're created about. But this is why we're here. I love Olivia. She says, we're here for the big show. You signed up and you bought the ticket and here you are. But the reality is you do not and cannot know what you want and what you are vibrating to without a form of resistance. Resistance. When I am unwilling to acknowledge my self power, my self worth and the world as it is and how I should react to it. And it all goes back to our mother our wonderful loving mother who some of us had a wonderful nurturing loving mother and some of us had this incredible teacher that taught us the only way you can ever know what you want is to experience what you don't want which moves into a form of forgiveness Sometimes it's really hard to forgive. You can, you can forgive off the cuff, but I mean forgiveness deep down inside that says, how can I ever forgive you for not teaching me that I am the most incredible being in my own existence? And I'm gonna tell you the secret. You ready? She didn't know. She did not know. She could not teach you what she didn't know. Because in her life, she didn't know how, she, how important she was or how beautiful or how incredible. Because I guarantee you, if you move into a state of pure self-love, there is no way you could not teach that to someone else. There's no way. Because I didn't come from that. And that's been the most difficult lesson in my life is teaching my kids my own self worth. You can teach them they're amazing and I love you and you're incredible. And they don't hear any of it because they're our kids, right? They don't hear any of it. But the reality is they only hear what they see. And if they can't see you being amazing to yourself, then they can't feel it for themselves. So for those of us who have came from a person that couldn't not only see it for themselves, but decided to take you out of the picture as well, congratulations. It's been a hell of a journey and you're doing a fantastic job because you not only had to overcome their stuff, but you had to overcome yours as well. Here's the reality. It's a work in progress from day one to day end. You will always do it. But you know what? You got the tools and you're here. And being here means that you care a lot more about seeking what feeds you and helps you to strive and helps you to grow other than going and having someone else tell you that everything's okay and God will judge you in the end. You see, there's a difference because we know that we are our, we are our own self judges. And so many times it's important for us to fix it ourselves now. And then there's this part of me that says, I want to fix it now because I don't want to do another life with you. So these are, and it's honest, these are the ones who believe in reincarnation. Your bucket list should not consist of going to all these extreme, wonderful, exotic places. Your bucket list should be reaching out to people of our past and finding a way in our inner being to acknowledge, accept who they are, release them, by accepting and acknowledging who we are. Because then we can truly heal, we can balance all karma, 
And we can also know that if we ever do come back again in another lifetime with them, that it won't be to go through those same harsh steps. So Mother's Day, I would say to you, if you don't meditate, meditate. You don't have to be a yogi and be 20 minutes in. You can meditate. Meditation to make conscious contact with your higher self. There's that source of God energy that always exists. That part of energy comes here to the earth plane when you come. So you're here. When you meditate, you connect with that higher essence of who you really are. And when you can connect and visualize, it helps bring that energy down into who you are so that you can have that extra, that extra umph, that extra healing and that extra energy. Maybe not to help anyone else, but to live your life the way you're supposed to live it. So, Mother's Day. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you because you are your own mother. We are our own mother. We are not the mothers of our past. We are not the mothers of our future or our present. And when you can become one in the essence of who you truly are, then you can truly be a good mother to anyone else who comes along. So I, as a mother, not of just all my beautiful children, but as a mother who's learning to mother myself each and every day, I honor each and every one of you for doing the same in your own life. You can make a choice and you can say my life sucks and I have every reason to feel bad and be guilty or be a victim. Or you can say, you know what? I had some incredible teachers in my life and that's what makes me the best mother I can be. And that's the mother of myself. And if I haven't been the best mother I could be to my children, then me waking up and realizing who I am and what I am and taking a considerable part of that journey and moving it forward, then you know what? We don't look back. We say, there are things and choices I might have made that have not been good, but from here on out, I'm gonna do the very best I can with what I have and with what I've learned. And I thank you, God, for giving me the courage and the strength to move it forward, to release all my guilt, to release all my pain, and allow me to be a mother of the universe in which I am created. And so it is. Can I get us? And so it is? And so it is. And what? And so it is. So happy Mother's Day to all of you beautiful, vibrant souls. And thank you for helping me to be nourished within my own self. Amen. Today I would like, we're doing something a little bit special and I would like to introduce to you Dr. Reverend Larry LaRue, if you would please stand. So I love this man. He's very, very special to me and I'm gonna try not to get emotional again. Sorry, I'm an emotional creature. I'm a Gemini Cancer right on that cusp. Oh, explains a lot. Um, I had a wonderful mentor that I absolutely loved and thrived from. One of the hardest teachers I've ever had. No nonsense, but you know what? When you learned it, you knew it. And it was when you know, you know, you know. Or you're walking yourself down the, the what? The flowered path and you're living delusion. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you my mentor's mentor. This is Dr. Reverend Larry LaRue, and my mentor tutored under him was a student of his from the Chapel of Awareness. So we do have a significant connection. I've known Dr. Reverend Larry since 2002, mm -hmm. and I am so fortunate to still have him in my life. And you will also recognize one of the students as Reverend Jim Buchanan. 
and he's a lecturer here. So without further ado, I would like for Reverend Jim to come down and explain to you a little bit about what he does. So would you like to join me on the floor? Um, Let's do it. Do you need a microphone? Do you need a microphone, or do you want to have a big boy voice? I, I'm microphone. Fight, fighting a situation. So. Okay. It's on. I think I'm here and you're here. I'm not sure. Oh, so ready to go? Well, let's do it. All right. Well, we're here to, to put on a, a special award, you might want to call it acknowledgement. Uh, back in 1977, we started a, a, a spiritual group called Concepts of Human Development. By 1979, we had applied to the private post-secondary board of education in the state of California and were approved as an educational institution. And as such, over the years, we've been able to put together information about each student and put it into something called transcripts. So that whoever has been working with or any spiritual acknowledgement that they needed to see or have is all put together in one package. It has a seal and a signature on it that makes it official. So what it does is give a lot of the people that were working in this field a chance to get credibility. So many times in this sort of uh, a spiritual arrangement. They have a little word here, something else over there, and they got whatever, but it's never been put together into a package so that it actually becomes a set of transcripts from your spiritual regimen. And so because of that, it, it, it gives you a certain credibility in your own mind and your own heart. We were in a position to get certifications, to get degrees, and to make it come together. So what we decided to do was to make sure that it was not a paper mill that whatever was here within these transcripts was verified and it put together. And it wouldn't be in the position of having to compete with an academic degree because it isn't about academia. This is about spiritual growth and the different ways and things and means that people can do it. If you go to a college, they're not going to sit there and give you credit for it. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. think about it, that the, the circumstances and the things that happen, um, it takes years of work. If you wanted to get a bachelor's degree from us, it would take 1,400 hours of specific study and 400 hours of elective, whatever you wanted to do. If you came in and wanted a master's, it's another 450 hours and 100 hours of elective. At this point in time, the way it worked out, if you wanted a doctorate, it was an additional 1,350 hours and 300 elective. Now, it seems it's a huge amount of time, but the situation is, is that we've been doing this for years, that Jim Buchanan has been doing. He has been working in this field since the early 90s. I have a set of transcripts here for him that you back in and you start looking at the pages and pages of work that he did just to get it back to him. And then since then, that was back in 1999. Since then, he's done thousands more hours of work. And so because of that, what we're able to do here today is give him the equivalency of a master's and move him on and award him his doctorate. From now on, this gentleman will be known as Reverend Dr. Jim Buchanan. And it's important that the people in the community, the spiritual community, understand that and know what's actually going on over here because it gives them a status and a position that they wouldn't have in their life. So, Jim, I want to acknowledge you very much. I have known this man for, I don't know, 20 some years. You know, it's, it's really funny. I was thinking up there while we're sitting. One of the last times that I had actually played around on the platform up here was the day we did a British reality TV show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember it. It was awesome. 
There was a, a, a reality TV show that, that would travel around the world and get different shots and things. It happened right here. It happened right there. BBC. <laughs> and you know, we table tipped, and I am not even kidding you, they got it all on camera. The table knocked, it lifted, it tipped, and, it, and you could see everyone's hands. It was, it was wonderful. But they only film it in British, so. So, with no further ado, Reverend Lorena, would you please present to uh, Jim Buchanan? As Secretary of Spiritual Teaching of the State of California, I acknowledge and recognize you as Doctor in Human Development, Jim, Reverend Jim Ray Buchanan. Doctor Reverend Jim Buchanan. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. I wanted to add one more thing that um, I've been working with the Millennium here off and on since 2002. She's been working with the website and all the lecturing and the programs that we've put together for the last six, seven years. We have put together her information. He was trying to hurry. <laughs> we put together her information. She's already got the equivalency of a bachelor's and should be working on her master's and probably get there a little later this year. And as her work and what she's done for us, she has been appointed the director of our secretary, excuse me, of education for our program. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Lorena. And thank you all. Thank you. You want to say anything? <laughs> uh, one thing I want to mention is it may sound like there's a lot of hours involved in some problem. Is, is the perception of something like that? So this is just things that I. But it also allows me to get in touch with several people and to actually experience uh, Alexander's uh, wisdom. So, I don't know if you might have mentioned, but we also have a website, CCIHD, and there's several blogs on there, from, I don't know, six or so, from Alexander Speaks. So, if you're interested in finding out about, about, about Alexander, then I think I want to say a master guide. explained to me that he was the one that was known as Alexander the Great. Mm. Not posting, but simply saying to this I had to actually drag it out of him. And then he began to explain a little bit of the things that had gone on his life. Uh, and after 
after I found out who it was and had read a little bit of the history of the Great, I kind of backed off of it. I was a little concerned about getting involved with somebody that was considered a murderer, a conqueror, and, and someone to really take advantage of someone. Um, it's interesting that history is not always that accurate, I don't think. Alexander says, I was sent to trying to spread information was trying to create a financial system in the whole area. And I was trying to uh, get the idea of spirituality across back then. Uh, Alexander's teachers were Aristotle and, and some of the great uh, people at that time. So he was actually a king's son. Father managed to bring in Aristotle as a teacher for him. So from that point on, his rest of his life, all his conquering was kind of supervised through a higher idea of mind about what you could do to change the world. Does he have a hyper perspective now that he's talking as a guy? I think so. It's the main thing I'm aware of. He seems to be able to stand back and see a bigger picture to see what's going on, not necessarily an individual or an individual place or something, but they seem to have an idea of how the whole world is evolving and what we're going to do. And a lot of that information is 